Imagine if you could create a mind map of your ChatGPT conversation. Not using ChatGPT to create mind maps, but to rather map your interaction with ChatGPT as you're having it, live. This is what I want to show you today and I think it's a very powerful approach to develop new ideas or to get an overview of a certain topic. You have a mind map which is showing you what you're thinking about live as you go which you can use to actually navigate through your knowledge. This is what we normally use maps for. So this map enables me to see what are the main topics inside this conversation, what are the main ideas, how they connect to one another, what are the ideas at the periphery of this knowledge. So for example, I can say, okay, I'm interested in this topic and I want to develop it a little bit further so I can select these ideas, send them to ChatGPT and ask it to generate something that would develop this cluster of ideas a little bit further. So it's kind of like you're sculpting your knowledge and your ideas with ChatGPT together. Or another really powerful approach, you can choose ideas which are not yet connected and then try to generate something that would connect them together in an interesting way. And this is usually where you have really interesting insights because you're connecting things that are not connected yet but that still make sense because they're relevant to the context of your conversation. I challenge you to try to do this with a standard ChatGPT interface. It's going to be very difficult because you will have to read through text in a linear way and try to find out uh, how you can extract all those gaps from there. It's going to be very difficult. Here it's much easier because you have a direct overview and you have some aids in the interface that uh, highlight the things that you should be connecting together and help you generate some ideas in this way. And by the way, the mind map that we're generating here is not a standard mind map. So most of them, they look something like this, where you have a central idea and then you make a tree structure. But this is a rhizomatic mind map. We use a concept that's called rhizome that was developed by Gilles Deleuze, a French philosopher, who was saying that uh, human thought works uh, less like a tree and more like a rhizome, like a biological structure. For example, uh, mycelium networks or the root structures under the trees, they are connected in a much more horizontal way. Uh, there is not this kind of vertical hierarchical organization that allows us to come up with really creative ideas and to connect uh, thoughts and concepts in a way that is uh, not linear, where everything is connected to everything else, but through the emergence of structure, we can generate some really interesting insights and knowledge. And this is exactly the kind of mind maps that we'll be building here. Not the standard ones, but the rhizomatic ones. If you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate to you a uh, step-by-step flow. Also, please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the uh, new videos on this topic. And if you have any questions about this workflow, just leave the comments below and I'll be happy to help. We'll be using an app that's called Infranodus. And here I will just open a new graph and I will say, okay, I want to talk about mind mapping. I'm going to select Explore with AI, ChatGPT mode. Here I'm going to give it a new name and click Visualize. And what's going to happen is that Infranodus visualizes every word and every concept as a node. And if they appear in the same context, they will be connected. So it creates a text network graph of the text structure. Then I have this ChatGPT mode, so it means I can interact uh, with uh, ChatGPT in a standard way, just through using prompts. So I'm going to say here, it answered, mind mapping is a visual tool for organizing thoughts, ideas, and information around a central theme. It's quite a general response. Let's ask it to elaborate further. So I just ask it elaborate, I add this, and then it's going to generate some more. And here I see directly uh, using this mind map what it's talking about. So I don't even need to read the answers. I'm just mapping out uh, everything that relates to mind mapping, right? So here I see it's talking about hierarchy, for instance, and connections. And then it's talking about solving problems, for instance, here. So then I also see that there is another cluster on the visual tool for thought. Okay, so let's say I'm interested in visual tools for thought. I can just select those and I can send it as a prompt. I don't even need to generate prompts in a standard language, I just select the ideas I want to develop and you see it adds more ideas that connect them in an interesting way. So I can just kind of sculpt and construct the map of this topic together with ChatGPT by just selecting the stuff I'm interested in. It's very hard to do that with the standard chat interface because you will have something like this, you will have to read through all those 
verbose answers and here you just kind of choose the stuff that you're interested in zoom in and go like okay I want to talk about brainstorming themes for instance right click save it's going to save it as a prompt it's going to use the context of the conversation along with the graph structure to generate something highly relevant for you that will connect to the main idea so this is another advantage of using a knowledge graph uh, or mind map in this case is that we have this semantic information on top of our conversation that helps us uh, generate much more precise responses from ChatGPT. So here it's talking about uh, brainstorming themes and how they can spark creativity. This is interesting. We can actually say, okay, let's talk about brainstorming creativity, but this is another approach I want to show you, is that you don't need to connect uh, things that are already connected. You can look for the things that are not connected and try to make links between them. So here I'm selecting brainstorming creativity and let's go to the opposite side of the map. So it's, it's really nice visual representation because it's really clearly showing to us which ideas are not yet connected. And we know that if we connect them in a new way, then we'll probably come up with very interesting insights. So for example, here I'm connecting brainstorming creativity, mapping and visual tool. I can see that they're kind of connected through central idea, but not so well connected because they're at the opposite sides of the graph. So I'm going to select all those and then I'm going to save it into ChatGPT as a prompt and then it's going to come up with uh, an answer that connects uh, those ideas together. So here it's talking about how brainstorming leverages creativity, mapping as a visual tool to enhance idea generation and problem solving. So then I understand how those ideas are connected. Another advantage of having a map is that I can pretend like some things don't exist there. This you cannot do with a chat GPT. You cannot erase some part of the conversation to steer it in a very specific direction. That's why uh, over time all those conversations get very generic. Here I can just choose and say, okay, I know that we're talking about ideas, so let's hide this from the graph. And let's also hide the notion of brainstorming and creativity and see what else comes up here. So then I see, okay, here there's something about tools for thoughts, which becomes much more visible. So it means that we can develop this further and then also enhancing and clarity. So for example, let's go into this more practical direction. We would maybe not normally notice it because uh, the main ideas of the conversation, such as brainstorming and creativity would uh, actually take all the attention, but now we focus it here. And I want to show you another way of interacting with the AI model here is that you don't have to do it through chat. You can actually open this AI module here and then the nodes that you selected, you ask it to derive some ideas from this context and then generate an interesting idea that would connect all those concepts in a way where they would be linking to the main topics of the discourse. So here it says enhancing clarity of thought, tools serve as catalysts for deeper exploration and structured ideation. That's great. I can use this. I can think about how we can use those tools for structured ideation. So I can add this into the graph and ask it to generate some more ideas that would connect those concepts together. Let's say now I want to develop this whole cluster further so I can go back into the main ideas, generate the names for those clusters and I have one on visualization tool and idea exploration here. I can select those two topics and then ask the model to generate something that would connect those topics together. And here it says visual tools act as navigable maps for the mind, enhancing clarity and, and organizing thoughts to foster deep insightful exploration and structured ideation. I can actually elaborate on this statement and I can ask the model to say, okay, in what way? And then click GPT-4 and then it's going to generate uh, an explanation of how visual tools can be used to foster exploration of ideas by making complex ideas clear and promoting organized thinking for deeper insights and structured creativity. So as soon as I arrive to something interesting, I can save it into the graph and then I can continue the conversation in this way. So you see, I kind of went on a tangent here by exploring a specific topic that was interesting to me. And as soon as I discovered something I like, I added it back into the graph. I can also ask the system to actually generate questions for me, which I can use as prompts. And here you have several ways of doing that. You can just follow the advice given by the panel here. So for example, 
uh, it proposes that we have two topics here, discussion, focus, and project planning, which are not connected. And I can ask it to generate a question for me. I can either use this button here, or here it also highlights uh, those two topics, which are less represented, and they're not so well connected to the main discourse. And then I can say, okay, generate a question from them. So how does project planning connect to discussing focus? And here it says, how can central themes and guiding information spark the planning and generation of novel solutions to specific significant challenges? Let's save it into the graph and see what answer it comes up with. And here it's talking about how it can help structure exploration of significant challenges. So then I can send it back to the AI and use the same meta prompt as I was using before. I ask it in what way and then now derive ideas from the context. So then it's going to try to come up with something that would uh, answer this question. Uh, so for example, here it says central themes, funnel brainstorm energy while mind mapping visualizes the journey towards innovation. Let's generate some more ideas. Central themes act like anchors in mind mapping, guiding thought streams towards targeted solutions and deeper understanding of challenges. So this is great because it shows me how through mind mapping I can actually highlight the main themes in the conversation which can uh, act as reference points. So that's a very relevant to my exploration of mind mapping. But at the same time, the peripheral ideas can be used to explore how you can develop these ideas further and expand this map on the territory of unexplored knowledge. So this is basically how you would use this approach and try to visualize the map. If your goal is to connect the ideas together, you would just be choosing the main ideas or topics and try to generate content that relates to them. Uh, but if you want to explore the periphery, then you would focus on the periphery. So for example, some clusters at the edge of the graph, zoom in and then try to generate some ideas that would link them together. So really you have several different approaches depending on your objectives. And in that way, we actually have a whole article on what we call ecological thinking, where we propose a certain methodology where you alternate between zooming in and zooming out. So sometimes you're kind of looking at the specific ideas and sometimes you zoom out and look at the whole picture. And you also alternate between focusing and exploring. So I can focus on a certain idea or I can explore how it can be developed further and build upon it using some other concepts. So it's kind of the same approach built into Infranodus and all these functionalities that enable you to highlight the gaps between the ideas that uh, encourage you to think of how you could connect the clusters which are not connected together if they exist or on the contrary if your text is too interconnected it would always push you outside of this structure. This is uh, this ecological thinking approach in action because it kind of helps you sculpt uh, your ideas and knowledge in an interesting way where you would always maintain a certain balance between connectivity and dispersion because the most interesting ideas they will be interconnected but not too much because then it will just be going over and over the same idea so you want some kind of mix between diversity of ideas but also interconnectedness and this is exactly what the mind map allows you to do. If you don't want to speak to ChatGPT live, you can also take an existing conversation that you have. So for example, here I have a conversation on knowledge graphs. I can just export the link in ChatGPT and then go in Infranodus apps, copy and paste that link. And the conversation is going to be visualized as a graph. And then I can use absolutely the same approach as I demonstrated here with this existing conversation. So you can also use this on the long form conversations you had so far and see what they were about and then focus on specific topics. Like for example here, um, let's say I want to go into graph augmentation. I can focus on that and then I select this topic and then ask uh, GPT to generate an interesting question that I could then get back into my conversation with ChatGPT and start off from where I left but choosing the part that is most relevant to me. So this is how it works. If you would like to try it out you can do so on infranodus.com. Let me know if you have any questions. I will also post a link to the article about ecological thinking so you can understand what I meant with the images that demonstrate the approach. 
Also, please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about new videos. And like this, you can also support our content. And I'll be happy to help you and also to hear your feedback about uh, your interaction with Infernodos. Thank you very much.